Hi there, welcome to the Top Dog Tips YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about hyperkeratosis in dogs and how to manage it. Before we get into that, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our website, topdogtips.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description below, you will receive a free ebook on 25 vet recommended homemade dog food recipes. So without further ado, let's get into it. So you've noticed your dog's nose to be excessively hard or crusty, and maybe the dog's paw pads seem unusually sensitive or have a hard crust on them. These are typical symptoms of hyperkeratosis in dogs. Hyperkeratosis can have several causes. Some dog breeds like retrievers and terriers are prone to this condition genetically. Other causes can be medical illness like canine distemper, a viral infection, or leishmaniasis or parasitic infection. Dog hyperkeratosis can be uncomfortable for your dog, but it's not life-threatening. Unfortunately, there is no cure for hyperkeratosis in dogs and the best you can do for your dog is to manage the condition and make them more comfortable. As part of the overall dog paw care routine, you can also somewhat prevent this from happening. So what is hyperkeratosis in dogs? Your dogs naturally produce keratin, just like humans do. Keratin is a protein that makes up the outer coating of the skin. It's tough and fibrous. Hyperkeratosis is a condition where your dog's body makes too much keratin. The keratin continues to grow and forms a hard crusty shell on your dog's nose and or paw pads. When your dog has that hard, dry, crusty shell over the nose, they cannot use their nose the way they are supposed to. And those hard, crusty shells on their paws can make their feet extremely sensitive as well. While incurable, hyperkeratosis needs to to be managed. If left untreated, your dog might find it painful to walk and the dog's nose function will affect their daily life. So let's talk about managing hyperkeratosis. With a few simple treatments and lifestyle changes, having hyperkeratosis doesn't become a huge problem for your dog or impacts your dog's life too much. The first thing we recommend is make sure you contact your veterinarian to diagnose because what they can do, they can treat it with antibiotics or topical creams. And when it comes to home treatments for pets, there are some things you can do as well well to make sure your dog is comfortable. So let's talk about six different ways to manage hyperkeratosis in dogs. Number one, get the shell removed. Because the keratin will keep growing and growing over your dog's paws or nose, you can periodically have it removed by a veterinarian. While the video shows how to do it, note that a veterinarian should only do it to prevent hurting your dog and prevent them from getting a skin infection. Your vet can carefully trim away at excess keratin on a dog's nose or paws and make your dog a lot more comfortable. If you have this done every few months, the symptoms of hyperkeratosis may not impact your dog's life at all. The second option is use skin creams. Over-the-counter paw nose bombs or creams developed specifically for dogs with hyperkeratosis will help loosen up the shell and keep your dog's nose and paws moist so that your dog can still smell like they should be able to and walk on their paws without pain. Some salves can help slow down keratin growth, although they can't totally cure it. Third thing you can do is use booties or socks. When hyperkeratosis takes effect on the paw, your dog's feet will be super sensitive so good footwear can help your dog be more comfortable so when you're taking your dog out make sure their feet are protected so that they won't come in contact with ice cold snow, chemicals or hot pavement while these are dangerous to a dog's paws in general hyperkeratosis makes them even more so so it's definitely something you need to take in consideration even more so if there's hyperkeratosis using dog shoes or socks with grips on the soles for your dog to wear outdoors or even around the house if you have cold floors like wood or tile will help. Fourth thing you can do is keep your dog's nails trimmed. When a dog has keratosis, it can be tough for pet owners to trim their nails without causing pain or injury, but trimming your dog's nails regularly will keep your dog more comfortable. If you're not sure how to do it yourself, then take the dog to a groomer or have your vet trim the dog's nails regularly to make sure or make it easier for your dog to walk without pain. Number five is let your dog ride. If your dog likes to go for long walks outside, but the hyperkeratosis condition has progressed so far that it makes your pet's feet hurt after a short time, then you can use a pet stroller. While it might seem silly to other dog owners, a stroller will give the dog the fun of a walk or run without hurting their feet. This doesn't mean that your dog never walks again, but rather it's a solution for the long walks outdoors. Bring the stroller, let the dog walk or run with you until you notice that the dog is slowing down, limping or acting like they're in pain 
then you can get them into a stroller. The sixth option is give your dog a sauna experience. Yes, that's what I said. To keep your dog's skin under those keratin shells soft and moist and to soften the ridges of keratin, you can give them some steam. You cannot bring a dog into an actual sauna, but you can run the shower with the hot water on full blast until the bathroom is hot and steamy. Don't turn on the exhaust fan. Then sit in the bathroom with your dog and let the steam soften up the skin a little bit in the keratin. Your dog will breathe better and be a lot more comfortable afterward. Hyperkeratosis doesn't mean your dog's life has to be miserable. And then also, like I said before, it's something you want to do. Make sure you have the hyperkeratosis trimmed by the vet frequently. So understanding the cause of hyperkeratosis. While there's no single underlying cause, various things that your dog's lifestyle can lead to this hardened skin and other associated problems. One potential cause is genetics. If this is the case, expect the symptoms to start appearing while your dog is young, usually about four to nine months old. The dog de Bordois and the Irish Terrier are particularly prone to hyperkeratosis called nasoplantar keratoderma. With Labradors, the concerns tend to be nasal parakeratosis. You know, hyperkeratosis can also be related to age. As dogs age, their skin thickens, which can lead to the calluses starting to form. Older dogs with pancreatic tumors or chronic liver disease have a higher risk of hyperkeratosis on their paw pads. Parasites and autoimmune disorders and certain infections such as canine distemper can also cause rough skin and hyperkeratosis. With autoimmune disorders, the problem stems from the fact that your dog's immune system attacks the connections linking skin cells that in turn can cause cracked dry skin associated with hyperkeratosis. One example of a parasite causing hyperkeratosis is the biting sand fly. This fly can cause leishmaniasis. That condition in turn can lead to excessive keratin production. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Top Dog Tips. Thanks for joining us today. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's how we grow the channel so we can continue to put out great content for you guys. And with that, I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you soon.